Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a one versus one on a Langre. Yes, indeed, we shall be having a Langre right after that Eastern Front match. We shall be seeing Go Pepsi Live fighting for the Panzer Elite. Fighting for the 17th SS Panzer Ganaria Division, Götz von Berlingen, with support from the 9th and 10th SS Panzer Division's reconnaissance units, up against Al Jazz. Yes, indeed, Al Jazz, one fellow who's in fact. If not already now, but still at some point, it's been level one with pretty much, well, number one with all four armies. Fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 3rd Infantry Division. This is definitely going to be quite the fight, a fight of titans. And we are already seeing a bit of focus from Pepsi towards the west, whereas Al Jazz, you know, going for a two engineer start is sort of spreading out a bit more casually. But I mean, Pepsi's already going for the high munitions. He's in fact largely ignoring the fuel. He's not going right for this or right for this. He is in fact going straight for the high munitions. Slightly different, but of course could also mean he's going to be getting a lot of upgrades for his Panzer Grenadiers. So there we go though. Munitions soon secured. Cut off point there, of course, connecting all also secured and Panzer continuing westwards. And there we go, plus 16 munitions. He's also there. In fact, I mean. Considering again he's staying on his side of the road, I mean he's not going in there. So again he's mm, he's not really being too aggressive. He's taking a more casual approach. So there we go. We are now in fact seeing aggression. We are seeing a pretty early harassment attempt. There we're going in. Panzergun is engaging the engineers, quickly pulling up behind some pieces of timber, freshly hewn from the forests, and opening up on some engineers, quickly forging them away, and then moving towards the munitions. No, he's in fact pulling back. Just having decided he wanted to do some manpower damage right there on the western flank, you know, perhaps keep this a bit safer for a bit longer. And at the same time, we also see force moving towards there, towards the east. So far, so good. And also going for this point, interesting in rifle, in fact. So Al Jazz is in fact going straight for this fuel point, hoping to deny it to the Panzerite if they don't already have it. Panzer is though two squads versus one squad rifle, not necessarily going to go too well for that American fellow. Quickly pulling back in the face of superior firepower. One rifleman dropping, that was poor Jerry. He fell in combat. Rifleman sneaking up on the western front and engineers of Algiers Hunstead trying to now secure the center rifleman pulling up here to protect them in the building, thus forming a slight blockade point. Peps going in for the cutoff point right there. Getting crowd sneaking eastwards. We are seeing so far four Panzer Gunner squads out and defensive operations out as the second thing. So a decent Panzer Gunner force now going for the support upgrade, which is definitely nice. Al Jazz at the same time pretty quickly going for mine to try and make it a bit more difficult for Pepsi to advance. Not a bad idea, though, of course, if there's a Ketten crowd to fill up, that might, of course, be spoiled. And no, actually, he's he cancels it. He decides not to do so. Wonder why Rafael going for the victory point right there, but quickly again getting engaged by Panzer Grenadiers. Moving up in a larger force, Pepsi is focusing all of his Panzer Grenadiers, which is rather leaving him a bit open to harassment, and hopefully Al Jazz will be taking advantage of that. In the meanwhile, though, these Rafael are quickly stopped by the Panzer Grenadiers right there. So far, no additional Gewehr 43 is being equipped. No additional anything else for Go Pepsi Live. Rifleman sneaking about, others getting reinforced. Kitten Trout moving up on the eastern half. And some lighter skirmishing over here. Panzer is almost down to half health versus a full health rifleman squad. And there we go, full retreat from Pepsi, leaving up the few point open for Rasmus by the rifleman. This could actually prove to be a problem for Pepsi because, again, most of his forces are here in the east. And we are seeing additional Panzergas pulling back, but they're not even wounded. He might be setting up for a structure. He might be going for straight for an armored car, but then again, he might have gone for the fifth Panzer gun this squad. Let's see what happens. Going for the fuel point there. Going for the fuel point there. Kampfgruppe Company going up. Panzer gun is getting healed. All the lovely bits of defense renovations, and both working on getting that Kampfgruppe Company up quickly. Mine spotted. That is what happens when their kitten crowds abound. Getting crowd under a bit of fire from the riflemen. Small blockade position from Al Jazz, while of course he's harassing and trying to secure the rest over there. And there we go, Comfortable Company. Will he be going for the Panzerjäger Command, or will he be actually be using the Comfortable Company? He is in fact using it. I mean, some players tend to go for the infantry half tax much earlier, but in this case, Go Pepsi Live is waiting a bit after having a strong start with the Panzerjäger. He then follows up with an infantry half track. 
less often seen but not necessarily bad and we are seeing an additional give here for the three being equipped Flamethrowers moving up here in the flank and there we go a nice flank assault on Pepsi's troops Flamethrowers moving in from behind one squad already forced back heavy losses down to one man all these engineers are quickly getting focused down by Pepsi's Panzerkanis mine goes off and then we see the last few men retreating while the Kettenkart sneaks up there we are seeing in fact also Luftwaffe for Pepsi not unusual it tends to be the more you know, usual thing the most effective of the three Panzer Elite doctrines Raffin pushed away by our much more superior Panzer Grenadier force but again Algius is taking his, the opportunity right here to push right in go for the cutoff point and again harass and rather deny Pepsi's many resources but there we go popping Panzers inside the half track actually good to see and then rushing it in against the Raffin right here lots of firepower containing one and already there one man is dead Harry did not survive the assault of the Panzers as he now continue in and quickly do more damage with that machine gun mount and of course the Panzer Grenadiers in there there we go, already one suppressed. They are leaving it. Oh, Panzers, you need to be careful. We are seeing Gewehr 43s. And we are seeing flanks moving in. Oh, Kettenkraut went down just as it went for Aljas's fuel point. Rifleman retreating. And a third Gewehr 43 upgrade up for Pepsi. No additional half track is coming out, so he might be sticking to one half track. Can work, can work. Half track rushing out. Question is, of course, where will it be going? Bit of quiet now. Reconnecting territory. Not a lot of fuel for Pepsi at the moment. Although he is going straight for the next building, he is going for the Panzer Support Command, of course. Wearing that Aldi, of course, might be going for some armor cars, and he's going to need the anti tank half track to stop that. Or at least have a good chance of stopping it. Whilst, of course, Aldi could end up doing a lot of terrible things to Pepsi's Panzer Grenadiers. Points being secured here and there. A bit more spread out. Of course the half tech constantly ready to support. And there we go. Luftwaffe troops ready to repair. Again that's one of the primary reasons you get them. Basically to get expert repairs without having to pay for the upgrade right there. In particular when you're low on fuel. And there we go. Rifle sneaking up. Going to get that Ketten crowd I think. Rafin moving up there, taking up position there, of course, to perhaps you know provide a bit of vision, a bit of scouting, be aware of Pepsi's movements. Again, that can pay off. And popping both Panzers into the half track, creating a small mobile strike force, which is good. One can fight from the half track, the other one can pop out. It can really do a lot of damage if well handled. Moving in the Ken Crowd here to do a bit of harassment on Al Jazz, but there we go, the half track rushing in. Oh, another Kenkrat went down for Pepsi. That was unfortunate and also a bit expensive. But there we go, Rifleman are suffering a bit taller. Those go for the fleets and the machine guns mounted. Another Rifleman squad moving in for the munitions. Or will they go for the cutoff point? It's further for engagement over here. Rifle Panzers, in fact, engaging up right between the two positions there. But they are quickly retreating in the face of this. Reuniting the car win and the Rifleman actually taking up position in the house. Interesting. Lots of blockade positions by Algia to make movement much difficult. Much more difficult for Go Pepsi Live. Interesting, interesting. Although in this case, right, if they can stick to this side, they will have the advantage in there. Go Algias is evacuating the premises and quickly getting out of there. But it's forced to retreat right past all of this firepower, which is causing quite some losses. And the anti tank half tech moving up, rolling in to try and clear out the building, perhaps with focused fire. Yes, indeed. High explosive round after high explosive round from the 37mm gun, knocking out crew. Now, we'll arrive in the building. Fire fly men here. In this case, it's definitely aiming up to its nickname, the Army Door Knocking Device. But there we go, the Greyhound moving in. Oh, misses! And oh, he hasn't got an armored skirt. There we go. Otherwise, that could have been an easy target for the anti tank half track. The first Luftwaffe unit arrives to support. Probably pulled in from some flak unit yes, sir. to provide the assistance, which was rather how some divisions actually normally actually got their reinforcements or additions. In fact, they just basically called in all troops on leave. Any sort of stragglers were quickly absorbed into any nearby division. So, of course, that could suddenly mean someone actually found themselves fighting in the SS or an infantry division on the front line, while in reality they might just have been some fellow from the Reichs Art by Dienst or a Luftwaffe security personnel fellow. Rather than lining up here for a nice strong force, 
Pepsi charging in, but the half tech, he has to be careful that he don't focus it down, otherwise it can quickly go down. But there we go, pushing in, half tech, firing into the midst, and there we go, pushing that with cover. Lots of firepower, even the Luftwaffe troops can do a bit. And there we go, already four kills with the Luftwaffe. Veterans, you want for one Rodman squad. Greyhound moving in, and the anti tank half tank is. Oh, it's all the way over there! And two sticky bombs on the half track, immobilized. This could be the moment for Aldias to move in and finish off the beast. And no, the Luftwaffe is suffering. Panzer is still holding out. Aldias is not pushing for it. The Luftwaffe troops are moving in to try and repair this heavily damaged half track. Six kills, my goodness. I mean, they are essentially about this as effective as Fultzgun is, but that doesn't mean they can't be doing any good, in particular in support of other Panzer Grenadiers. And there we go, two anti-tank half tanks up for Pepsi, and let's go have a look at Al Jazz, who's not gone for a doctrine yet. He does have armored cars, supply and all that. An anti-tank and could work well for him, or a BAR upgrade, I think. Full retreat from Pepsi's Panzer Grenadiers. And we are seeing mines going up down the road. Good point, although again, Ketten Kratz can be a bit problem. And another Ketten Kratz to note from Pepsi. Slightly more mechanized approach, nothing bad in that. And again, lots of harassment going for the valuable points. Try to make it as difficult as possible for Go Pepsi Live. How you usually find, I mean, if they are focusing all the troops in one point, then you try to strike at all the other points. And if he's, you know, all over the place again, then you strike somewhere where he's, you know, weak. It's about the uh, understanding those bits. Troops coming under fire from the anti-tank half-track. Something was going on there, not sure, could probably be an upgrade. Flame for engineers. Panzer and the anti-tank half-track. And looks like Aldias might be swinging towards there to do some damage, while Pepsi is preparing for a major push over here in the east. Suddenly coordinating with the infantry half-track and the anti-tank half-track. Ooh, another Kencrat went down, the Greyhound made another drive-by shooting getting a Ketten crowd while the Ravner are pushing up here only one squad of Panzer against really hold this back and the reaction from Pepsi is just to continue up the east try to do as much damage there as possible it seems for the pulling in the infantry half track could have been useful going for the fuel point right there mine was in fact detonated although probably by the Ketten crowd spotting it Al right, is definitely looking a bit stronger now than he did a bit earlier Rather than taking up position right here to probably try and harass the Panzer Grenadiers moving about. Armored car moves in and jumps upon the Panzer Grenadiers right in the center. And an anti tank gun gets repaired. There we go, Panzer Grenadiers down. Rather than moving in there, coming under fire from the infantry half track though, has to be careful. And so does the infantry half track. Could get sticky bombed. And there we go, sticky bomb, sticky bomb. Damaged engine, but it will be able to limp out of there. Though now the anti tank half track is in danger of getting sticky bombed. Grenades have been researched. Armored car pulling up here, and there's no anti tank half track to stop it because again it's been occupied by the riflemen. Infantry have to continue providing fire support, suppress some of the riflemen. Luftwaffe troops arriving to try and contain the situation, but I don't think it will be enough. More half tank up for Pepsi. That's going to help against any future anti tank guns, which we do see. But good usage of the armored car by Algas, not pushing it in where, of course, the fighting is thickest, but actually running around on the edges, constantly forcing Pepsi to relocate his anti tank half tank and, of course, keep them back. He can, of course, strike elsewhere. So, really good usage of the armored car, getting the maximum out of it without, you know, it getting disabled by an anti tank half track. Armored car sneaking up. I mean, um, mortar half track. Red here bombard. Of course, question is, will he be able to spot it again? Note, I mean, if you can spot something like this in the fog of war, that's usually where an anti tank gun is. It's a little trick some players use. And there we go. Paid off. Because again, otherwise there's actually no heavy cover there. So I mean, if all of a sudden while looking in the fog of war and you're suddenly hmm, heavy cover where there shouldn't be, there's probably an anti-tank gun. It applies both to American and German ones. So fun little fact there for those that did not know. 
Motor fast stopping the engine. Yes, though again, points are cut off now, and now Pepsi is the one rather pushed back. Infantry have take all that other repaired. Panzer Grandiers, Luftwaffe troops could also join in. Would not be a bad idea. They can still add fire, still add volume to the forces of Pepsi and the 17th. And again, another Kengrad Madrid getting assaulted right here. We are seeing airborne doctrine to face the Luftwaffe. Panzer command up, probably again one of the obvious three buildings when you're going for Panther Battle Group, but again, could also give him assault rifles, could definitely help, and of course the armored car. So plenty of options there. At the same time, we are seeing the tank depot going up for Al Jazz. Half tax moving in against the rifleman up there in the east. A bit of fire there, rifleman down, armored car, anti tank gun, ready to face off against the hordes of Pepsi, but of course the motor half tank could make things a bit more difficult. And there we go, anti-tank half-tech suffering a bit nastily to the anti-tank gun. Greyhound moves in as well, trying to get off. Oh, the anti-tank gun misses. Had he been able to hit, that could probably be in the end of the anti-tank half-tech right there. And we are seeing 40 Jägers moving in from the 3rd 40 Jäger Regiment to assist as well. Which was rather the real 40 Jäger unit actually fighting for the most part against the American. Not a division, but only a regiment. So fun little fact there. Panzer's moving up here, trying to outflank the rifle again. Kettenkraut in trouble, pulling away using the Luftwaffe camouflage ability. But again, Pepsi is getting ready for the larger push over there. Leaning behind only a smaller force to try and cover his west flank from har harassment. Not harassment, but harassment. Pushing up there, good. Panzer's fortune Jaegers. Luftwaffe troops could also be joining in a bit. In the meanwhile, Algiaz is pulling back. Tank their post soon up. Rifleman continuing here using the houses for cover, which is good. A bit of suppressive fire from the rifle. Panzers could stop the rifleman. No armored cars, which could have helped a bit, I think. But there we go. Grenades against both Panthers, killing one, in fact, two, forcing the rest away. Things are looking a bit grim for Pepsi. Hang up these with the f Luftwaffe troops. Panzer is suffering a bit heavily here, and there we go, another push by Algius up the center, and again, all keeping up pressure on the flank, using his numbers to his advantage against Pepsi's greater strength. But again, lower numbers. Mortar rounds flying, and Tatang half track trying to get that armored cover did not quite succeed. Mortar rounds, on the other hand, doing quite excellently against the riflemen. Luftwaffe continuing there, and there we go, Panzer and Fortune Jägers are still hiding in the building, causing quite a bit of problems, quite a blockade position. And Engineers trying to flank, but are getting caught by Fortune Jägers. No, Panzer has actually abandoned the building, pulling away. Armor car keeps hammering away at the building as well, making things a bit more difficult for the Fortune Jägers. Flame for Engineers pushed away, anti-tank on hammering away, actually collapsing quite a bit of the building. Now the Luftwaffe troops are the ones to suffer under the might of the Greyhound. And it's quite a bit of firepower. Looks like the Americans have retreated from the west. Lots of Gewehr 43s, but no assault rifles and no Panzerflex. And we are seeing a Sherman right there for Aljaz. Rolling forwards. The anti tank on fire. Sherman hitting the garage. And a bit of anti tank on fire adding in. Come on, Panzer Grenadiers. Chester and CD find. Oh dear, anti-tank half-tank runs into a nasty combination. Sherman tank and other bits blowing up in seconds. And sadly, Pepsi doesn't really have much to actually stop a Sherman. He can at most currently disable it. Not really knock it out. So of course the question becomes how will he react to this? What shall his response be? And also note, he's, he does have access to strafing runs, but he's not going quite for it yet. He could even be setting up for a bombing run, I suppose. And there go, flanking up, infantry half tech moving in. Oh, careful thing to remember about troops and infantry half techs. They are quite exposed to grenades and flamethrowers. Getting stopped there by butterfly bombs and mortar rounds. 
Getting stopped right here again by Panskis. And oh, they actually got away with no damage, forcing away this small force. But there's the Greyhound ready to meet them. While other forces are moving up on the western flank. Falschim Jägers now with FG 42s. The F. Falschim Gewehrs von Fiertig, designed to support the Falschim Jägers, was meant as partly a battle rifle but also a machine gun track to support them. Since the MG 42 would be a bit too unwieldy on airborne missions. But it could also, in fact, function as an assault rifle, thanks to its interesting design. Troops advancing. Ooh, minesweepers actually spotting some of the butterfly mines. Or bombs, in fact, and the Luftwaffe there getting quickly run off. Heavy casualties. And the half tanks themselves are now getting run off by Aljaz brave troops. Taking the fight to Hans. And the response is, in fact, a mod of three to try and stop the Sherman. And, well, the 17th has actually only had Stoops and Marder. What is this? A bombing run. Oh, getting several Panzer Grenadiers and a half-track. In fact, another half-track just went down to the armored car. Infantry and... Oh, more to half-track just went down. A huge loss to the 17th SS and Pepsi. And he cancelled the mod of three. No idea why. Now, of course, beginning on it again, and he's getting tank buses as well. He's desperately not desperate now for anti-tank weaponry, and he's just lost his final half track. Flak feeling doing what he can against the Greyhound, but the Sherman and the Greyhound combined it a bit too much. Although the Greyhound is heavily damaged. And there we go, tank busters ready, but so is the Sherman now with a 50 caliber on top. Panzer is moving out there, Minesweeper is moving through, right through the butterfly bomb field. So they are quickly getting focused down by Pepsi's brave Panzer and the although again, negative cover can be very bad for you. And there we go, quickly run off again. Marder free ready. Was actually supposed to have the Yak Panzer IV, but they never actually received it. Luftwaffe troops now suffering with defensive veterans, though making it a bit harder to knock out. And there we go, nice hit from the Marder's Pack 40 gun. Panzer is moving up, Panzer and oh, nice hit, nice hit. Will this Marder get off another hit? No. Nope. Sherman managed to retreat behind the Bokash. Good move by Aljas. Raven here getting caught by a lot of the severe Panzer Gunner force. Force. And the Raven here surviving, but there we go, now finally pushed off. And again, going for the cutoff point, tank busters desperately trying to stop them, but not quite succeeding. Fulgium Jaegers have been forgotten, so have the cabin crowd, it seems like, or the Fulgium Jaegers have to ambush anyone going for the fuel point. And the Luftwaffe keeps killing. While well, the Panzers are sneaking out on the east, going for the fuel point there as well, on munitions, I mean. And trying to get that Greyhound, but even with the damaged engine, it's still a threat. The main gun is still working. Rather than against the Luftwaffe troops, they need support. Engineers are quick to repair the armored car, which is good. Uh, Sherman moving in. Tank busters arriving. Will they be able to get it? Oh, there we go. Marder. Oh, the Marder misses. Oh, what a whiff. Losing ammunition depot. Nice hit on the Sherman. Will he be able to finish it off? Oh, Aljas doesn't seem to be moving in. And he is too late. Resulting in the Marder. Three. Scoring a kill. The Marder three based on a very successful Panzer 38T chassis made in Czechoslovakia. That chassis saw a lot of action as different weapons, sort of used as the Gepard flak panzer, as the Marder, as the Hetzer, and as the Grille sort of self propelled infantry gun. So, been quite a lot of action, quite a lot of designs. There was even a reconnaissance tank based on it. Raffling in here, getting caught out in the overbar panzer is now with dual offensive veterancy, something to be very careful with. Another Sherman or tank destroyer on the way, perhaps. Dual anti-tank guns going to make a, a direct push by Pepsi very difficult. 
Still, he's holding on. There we go. Fulgmeg is opening up on the right from the FD-42s. Breaking the silence and breaking the bones of the Americans. Just note how much damage they can do. They can't take a lot of damage, but they can deal out a lot. In particular, when they ambush. So there you go. I mean, Reifman taking some pretty huge losses. Wreck of this Sherman. Blasted to bits. And we are, in fact, seeing a back to you. He's probably going to try and recover the wreckage of all the half tracks. That's pretty damn nice. That's a good move. Sherman rolling onwards. Reifman sneaking over towards West again. Aldias constantly shifting. He's not just striking one point. Eamon times he strikes two points at the same time. It looks like the Sherman's rolling up on the eastern flank, doing a bit of work there while the Reifman are moving towards the west. Marla Free does arrive and the shot bounces off. That was a bit unfortunate. And the Fortune Megas quickly find themselves overwhelmed. But there we go. Light anti tank half tank has been recovered. Now it just needs to be fully repaired. Pushing up through the center, Greyhound, anti-tank guns, even the Marder's moving in though, has to be careful, the anti-tank guns don't knock it out. And there we go, Marder 3 ready, should focus, and there we go, Panzerweck, oh dear, getting anti-tank guns, getting anti-tank guns. While the Sherman itself is suffering to the Marder, Panzerweck is suffering heavily to the Sherman itself. BAR's up for Aldias' infantry, increasing their firepower much greatly. And we are in fact seeing the total collapse of Go Pepsi Lime's assault right there through the center while the west part of his you know, map control is also quickly deflating. Anti tank half track though is ready to provide a bit of light assistance. And we are seeing the mortar half track soon ready as well to join the fatherland once more in its struggle against the American foe. Supply lines are broken. We have territory But Go Pepsi is definitely under a lot of pressure now. Again, Aldia's ability to rather strike at several points is quite nice to note. There we go, Mortar half track up. And the press of volume makes it much easier for the Forge Megas to close in and finish off the Rifleman. Now, of course, question is what else is there for Pepsi to recover at the moment? Not a lot. There's a bunch of Cadenkratz, and that's largely it, although he might want to recover or fully repair the mortar half track. Raffin moving up here, running straight into a lot of panzers. Man of fire. And both ooh, both didn't quite take notice of each other. Not skirmishing over here, 40 megas run off now, leaving behind only the Luftwaffe forces to try and fight against all of this. Panzer make a push, and there we go, the Greyhound is finally knocked out. Anti tank gun has not been recruited. And these engineers could quickly be going down, meaning a small victory right there for Pepsi. But again, pressure on the west and no real response, no real coordinated effort. And we are seeing the Panzer Support Command upgrade. So he doesn't even have access to Panthers right away. He might want a second Forge Maker squad to deal with all the forces over here. Could be a possibility, I would say, at the very least. More to attack getting repaired. Luftwaffe forces moving towards the west, Forge Megas and the regulars. There we go, Raven pushed off. While the riflemen continue through the center. There we go, Mortar half track ready. That's definitely going to provide again some fresh firepower for Pepsi in the fight against the Americans. While Algas tries to contend with the crap foe. Going for a weapon support center could probably mean a sniper, yes indeed. Granted the Americans didn't really have snipers in World War II, they had marksmen, but not really snipers. That was more the domain of the German and Russian armies. Who really played around with that, I think, during World War II. Sticky bomb on the mortar half track and immobilized. And he's going to lose that mortar half track again, of course now. Aldias is aware, of course, of the Bergtig, which is probably going to result in him being more eager. Oh, there we go, bombing run. Getting, and of course, also wrecking the wreck. I mean, that's, again, what 
after being seen in the back so you got Al Jazz is also now going to be much more concerned with actually destroying the wrecks off any sort of vehicles you see because he does not want Pepsi to recover and again that's not a bad idea but of course now additional 40 megas are joining in a few more butterfly mines could work but there we go 40 megas running into the Sherman and losing a bit there and also a bit clearing out there of the shrubberies grenade but a bit too far Panzer's here caught on their own they need to retreat and a tank half tech pulling away Ooh, small engagement well, larger engagement in fact well the Sherman seems to just be dominating the western half again far away from any of Pepsi's anti-tank weaponry and let's go return to L. Yes, now that Pepsi's actually making recovery suddenly gaining map I mean it is rather you know going back and forth either one has suddenly map control and then he loses it and the sniper L. Yes, the sniper gets caught by the Panzer Grenadiers and he is quickly down oh dear that was quite unfortunate Unfortunate while the Sherman continues. Fortunately, eggs in return, though, getting shot down by the right from right there. And look for the troops. Oh dear. Ne oh, he lost the veteran C3 of Panzer Grenadiers. That was a huge blow to Pepsi. Only going to mirror the loss of that sniper as they could easily chew through most infantry units. De Pepsi will definitely feel that in the match later on, I imagine. Is ready and asking for smoke. But good use of bombing runs, by the way, and no use of strafing. Tank bursters quickly pulling away. Back to you. Hasn't really much to do anymore. Or well, they could still recover some Kettenkrads. Kettenkrad. Another sniper out for Algas. No further armor. And of course, if Pepsi gets himself a Panther Battle Group, this could be a bit of a problem for Algas, although he does have two anti tank guns. There's also the mortar to contend with. Not sure why he's rolling through the Bag Tiger right there. The Bag Tiger itself wasn't really. The Bag Tiger wasn't really that. Yeah, you know, a recovery tank. Some suspect it was actually a modification just used as a demolition vehicle, you know, placed down demo charges, but it wasn't really a recovery vehicle. I'm not sure why Relic went for that. Mada suffering a bit. Luftwaffe troops getting snuck, quite a few of them lying around in the middle of the road. Still, Pepsi has managed a comeback. Now of course question is can he hold on to it? Mine engagement over here and Algas of course at the same time pushing up at several other points to put on the pressure on Pepsi. Definitely working out here Rifleman getting slowed down but other Rifleman are continuing. Meaning that's not much a Pepsi can do without something more solid. And the response in pulling back the Panzer is not quite there, although we are now seeing a 40 mega force on Luftwaffe moving in to try and contain the antics of Algas. Grenade, ooh, doesn't quite kill the Panzer but they are awfully low in health. Down to one man, and he might even be going down. Oh, very lucky he didn't. Very lucky right there for Pepsi. The 40 is moving up, and we are not seeing any single airborne from Algas. He doesn't quite care about that. Sniper fire gets one poor 40 Jaeger. And Al yes, was a bit too reckless right there with his anti tank gun. Looks like he was able to cover it, allowing for its escape. But there we go, the other anti tank gun now is suffering the same fate without protection. 40 megas quickly clear out the crew in a brutal manner. Looks like the sniper gets away. Another sniper on the way for Al yes, really trying to drain out the manpower from Pepsi. And then we got a nice large assault for the rifle squads and a sniper. These four niggas do not stand a chance. Sherman suffering a bit. To the mod of three hits. And again, Pepsi might find himself a bit overwhelmed. Panzer's in each retreat. A bit too late. I think no, managed to get out of there. 
Not a lot of further butterfly bombs after that, only one there. Could perhaps use a few more, I think. And again, the Forge Mingers are running to try and contain the situation for Pepsi. And will he have a chance of actually getting up hand the battle group? Which could, in fact, perhaps help him a bit. Riflemen going down, lots of FG-42 fire, Pats goes moving up with the Gavir-43. Ooh, not looking over the rifle, and a strafing run, but it absolutely misses everything. Enemy not quite working out there, and oh dear, lost a unit, lost a tank buster squad, oh, poo. Forge makers are trying to contain it, but are quickly run off, two heavy losses. Forge makers moving in, clearing out the anti-tank guns, they are getting snapped, they are getting shot. Not quite succeeding. Anti-tank gun is still there, still standing. And the back he is just sort of firing away with its tiny little machine gun, while the anti-tank half is also hoping to do a bit. Enemy unit down. And by Joe, he did it, but of course. The Berk Katiga is ready to just begin picking up the pieces, but there we go. Sherman rolling in. Right at the Marder 3. Veterans E2 increases the penetration, and of course, Veterans 1 increases speed. And Titanic half flick ready again. Could it be that Pepsi is going for the Panther Battle Group? Observation posts report we are losing a sector. Well, only one way to find out. Wait and see. A return, pushed by Pepsi, but again the snipers, the Sherman, is rather making things a lot more difficult as it is quickly draining of manpower. There's not quite any other things that can really stop them. Rifling pushing up again, Algier is definitely feeling much more confident now, much stronger. In footing. FG-42 carrying Fulton Jaegers pulled away. Rifle moving in, going straight for the Mount of Free now that it's exposed, but there we go. Panther Battle Group has arrived. The Panzer Kampfwagen 5 are there to try and save the day. But, oh, quickly suffering Panzerchecks and Sticky Bombs. So those Rifle with the Panzerchecks. And there you go, Sticky Bomb, but no damaged engine as yet, but the Panther needs to get away. Just quickly, Pepsi, get him out of there. And Bergatig, of course, now to try and have to pull that together. Panthers bombarding. Not anti-tank, half deck joining in. And dual sticky bombs on the Bergatig. And Panzerchecks shot. All immobilized and destroyed engine. Desperate effort to try and save the Bergatig. But I think it could go down to a Panzerchecks from Algas. Or will it? No. We are seeing an anti tank moving in to try and get the job done. Enemy unit. And there we go. The Berger Tiger is nothing but a smoldering wreck right now. Enemy has 100 points and counting down. And Al Jazz's harassment just continues. Keep striking from all sides, going for the vital points, forcing Pepsi to spread out a bit more. Fultimegas and Marder 3 trying to contain the right flank, but again, Pepsi's really leading now. We have territory out of supply. Grenade on the Fultimegas, but the Fultimegas just charge in. Suffering nothing from the grenade, but suffering from the rifle and the BAR fire due to them being veteran T2 and thus more accurate. It is nicht looking good for Pepsi. He has suffered here. much. He still has his Panthers, but they are heavily damaged. Luffer 2 is doing what they can. And Veteran G3 for the Riflemen, god damn! Alan just definitely has all the cards right now. Sniper's moving up to try and help on the right flank. Riflemen and Sherman in the center, and a few engineers on the west part. Although they might get a nasty Fulgham Jaeger shaped surprise. 
Panther's not really doing much. Can't really do much. I think. And there we go. Then yes, I'll run off. But again, more vibe from moving westwards, which could definitely be much harder for the Forge Mega squad to counter. And there we go, Ruffin trying to get off a sticky bomb. No, being out on the rope and does make you a little less likely to do that. Lighter skirmishing right there, and let's go return to Pepsi as he's fighting desperately to contain the set. The issue can made right here by the 4th Infantry. Rifle Squad could be going down. Algas could be losing it. Down to one man, but no, he makes it out of there. My goodness. Luftwaffe calling in the Henschels. And no, it. Oh dear, he doesn't quite get the Sherman. The Sherman makes managed to get out of there. But Algas is anti tank and is getting outflanked. But the Luftwaffe troops trying to clear it out are getting sniped. Panther though continues, suffering heavy from anti-tank on fire. Destroyed engine on the Sherman. Panther though is almost done. Fulton Jaeger's dropping in. Panther actually goes down. Fulton Jaeger's moving in, trying to catch a sniper, but it... Both snipers looks like they're going to get away. Of course, Pepsi could run in and Panther fast the anti-tank gun, but my goodness, that was an extraordinary losses. At the same time, Panther moving up there, but again, heavily damaged. And getting Panthers wrecked. And Sticky Bombed. Oh, Pepsi. Losing both Panthers. You know. There's the noble way. 23 points while Algas has 436. Definitely not looking good for the Germans despite their best efforts. Forty Megas run off. Anti tank gun cleared out. Oh dear, more grenades, killing Fulci Megas and one squad could in fact be going down to the veterans who free and there we go. And GG from Go Pepsi Live in the face of Al Jazz. And another half track goes down. We are still fighting the enemy. Achtung, the enemy is impacting Kampkopelea's victory points. Bit of talk going on there. Ready to execute orders. Bit of quiet. And more Fulton Jaegers being desperately summoned onto the field to try and turn the tide, time. but that it's a bit too late, I fear. For Pepsi, no many how, how many Fulton Jaegers he's going to throw at it. It's not going to fix it. And again, I think he's a bit too late now with the butterfly bombs. But there you go, game over. And of course, what can we learn from this match? I mean, rather saw, you know, Al just rather handling, you know, the approach from Pepsi, which just, you know, balling up the Panthers in one spot, but then of course he just hit every well, forcing Pepsi to then to try and sort of spread out his forces more, and thus allowing, of course, Al just much better to sort of react, because again, the force which Pepsi had wasn't really good in a sort of, you know, diff reacting to those sort of things. It was more, you know, one punch force. And that was rather what Al just, you know, took advantage of. Had Pepsi perhaps had a second half track. He might have been able to do more damage again with only one half second, too many panzers. His force was a bit unwieldy. And that was rather what Al Jazz took advantage of. And then, of course, right into the base. And Pepsi just wasn't prepared for armor. He was forced into a handle with Panzerex and Martyrs and didn't quite get the full success out of it. He might have done better with one armored car or a assault rifle squad or two. But again, all troops were Gewehr 43s, which again was a bit unwieldy, I think. And there's all those little tiny things which rather in the end Al Jazz did take advantage of and he did punish Pepsi for it quite successfully. Successfully. We also seeing of course dual supplied upgrades, great stuff, you know, gives more veterans to his troops and of course also decreases manpower upkeeps. I mean there was great play by Pepsi, of course, or even better play by Al Jazz. So there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this match. If you did, why not subscribe to tell your friends? And if you didn't, well why not send a replay of your own? This is Impel Dane saying cheers.